Hi, I'm Lisa S. Johnson, photographer and author of 108 Rockstar Guitars and my new book, Immortal Axes. And you can find me on Instagram at LSJRockPhotos. And I'm listening to Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. Of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. We are joined today by a returning guest. She was on the show a couple of months back, and the amount of knowledge I gained from not only photography as well as the amazing rock and roll guitars that she took photos of was just awe-inspiring. So we had to have her back on the show for a second time around. We're joined today by the amazing and talented Lisa S. Johnson. How are you doing today? Hey, Kurt, I'm doing great. How are you? <laughs> doing good. You know, it's always fun having a, a returning guest because there's always usually something new and exciting happening in their lives and in their careers. Well, thanks for having me back, Kurt. We had such a good chat the last time. So, hey, here's round two. So for those that don't know anything about yourself as a creative person, and for those that never got to watch the first interview, shame on them. Tell us who you are and what you're bringing to Two Geeks Talking this time around. Well, my name is Lisa S. Johnson, and I'm a photographer of guitars is what I've specialized in. And I'm also a Kundalini yoga teacher. So I kind of infuse yoga philosophy a little bit in with my books. My first book was published in 2013 called 108 Rockstar Guitars. And the 108 is a cosmic number in yoga philosophy. It's a very auspicious number. Every time people say the 100 greatest, 101 greatest. So I wanted to infuse that 108 in there. So the 108 Rockstar Guitars. And then I just published my second book called Immortal Axes, Guitars That Rock. And that came out through Princeton Architectural Press in fall of 2021. It feels like it's still hot off the press. You can see this picture behind me of Peter Frampton's guitar on my wall. And Peter Frampton wrote the foreword for the book and Susie Quasher wrote the afterwards. That's what I've been up to in the last couple of years, just uh, photographing guitars and publishing some books and working on some other cool projects. Let's touch on those other cool projects because I happened upon your Instagram and social media feeds and I, I saw you were doing something amazing. What, what have you done most recently that was so amazing? What was really cool is I got a phone call from the curator of the Richmond, Virginia Museum of Art, the Virginia Museum of Fine Art. They are doing an exhibit right now called Storied Strings, the Guitar in American Art. And they were asking my help to procure some guitars for the exhibit, an exhibit that depicts how the guitar has been portrayed in American art since the early 1800s. And they have these incredible paintings. They're like Van Gogh's. I mean, just beautiful, beautiful artworks of scenes of women playing stringed instruments, a lot of women playing stringed instruments way back in the 1800s, because it was part of a refined education to learn a guitar or a lute or a mandolin. So the exhibit opens up with these 18th century paintings, beautiful paintings. And then it segues into all different kinds of cultures. So African-American, the cowboys and Indians, how they used instruments, sister, Rosetta Tharp, then it goes into Kitty Wells with photography as a medium versus paintings. And then it goes into rock and roll. And they also have guitars in the exhibit. They have 35 different guitars in the exhibit, to kind of illustrate the history of the guitar. And where they inserted my piece was in the Hawaiian guitar section. And I have another little Hawaiian guitar hanging up behind me here too, that I've had for years. I got at the Dallas uh, guitar show years ago. So I've always loved Hawaiian guitars and I got to photograph Elvis Presley's little Hawaiian parlor guitar that he used in the movie Blue Hawaii. They wanted that image for the exhibit and I had a diamond dust uh, print, GK, G clay print that's got glass in it so it sparkles when you walk by and it's absolutely beautiful. It is also in their book which is Storied Strings, The Guitar in American Art and you can buy this book on their website, Virginia Museum of Fine Art.com, VMFA.com, I believe it is. And it's a beautiful book about the history of the guitar. And it shows you these incredible paintings and guitars. And I find it a, 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 such a, um, a refreshing um, exhibit of guitars. Here's my image that's the Elvis nice. Presley the guitar up there. And they also had Eldon Shamblin's guitar that I photographed. It's in my book, Immortal Axis. Here it is in the catalog. Beautiful. Uh, so this book is, that's Lead Belly on the back. There were, there were actually quite a few portraits, paintings of Lead Belly um, and his story in the exhibit. 
And it's just a different journey because, you know, you've seen, we've all heard about the Metropolitan Museum of Art, how they did the, um, that amazing exhibit of guitars called Play It Loud a couple of years ago. And then it went to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And I photographed a lot of guitars in that exhibit. And of course, it's jaw dropping. It's astounding to see all of those incredible guitars in one exhibit. What's different about storied strings, the guitar in American art, it's paintings of how the guitar was depicted through the years. It's the great American icon. So I'm honored to be in that exhibit very, very much. It's just a thrill and it's gonna be, this whole exhibit will actually be moving to Nashville in April of 2023 to the Frist Museum in Nashville. So it's not getting just one show, it's getting two major shows. So I'm just super excited to be a part of it. Well, that's awesome. It, it was something that I, I got to appreciate in, in my education early on, uh, which was art history and, and contemporary as well as practical. Uh, being across from Detroit, we got to see the uh, the DIA and, and the Contemporary Museum of Art there as well, too. So it was amazing to see the history and the, and the richness of, of culture from different societies yeah, I mean, as well. I just have to show like yeah. these images. Look at this beautiful painting of this woman playing the guitar with a young girl watching over her. And here's another one of a woman playing some kind of a stringed instrument. Mandolin. Just like. so elegant. There, it's regal. This exhibit is regal. It, the paintings are just beautiful. I love this one. This is one of my favorite pieces big painting because it reminds me of me as a little girl, you know, with my dad with the guitar, but it's with a woman, with a little girl with the guitar. So it's just a completely different take mm -hmm. on a guitar exhibit. So I highly recommend it if you can go see it or to get this book. This is a great gift item as well. Someone who loves guitars and wants to see a unique take of the guitar. This is a fantastic book, $60 on their website. Yeah, and it looks fairly thick as well, too. So definitely a great gift. It's not as thick as my book. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is mine. I love that cover. That's just amazing. It's a great journey to see because I don't think a lot of people appreciate the history of the guitar itself because the fact that we, we see books like yours and we see amazing exhibits like at the museum there as well too, just the understanding that the history of this unique instrument to bring forth joy and sadness and, and hope and inspiration is is amazing to see. Absolutely. And you know, it's just a different way of looking at the guitar because I think like what you started saying, I think the guitar has kind of been taken for granted. The sound of the guitar has been taken for granted from the current youth culture. There is a really deep history of the guitar and how it came to be and how the electric guitar came to be. It's not just a sound out there to be taken for granted. I mean, the, the wire and wood that comes from all over the world to make these beautiful instruments that are handcrafted by talented luthiers all over the world. It's something to be celebrated. I can't stop seeking out new ones to photograph that are significant. And, you know, I feel the heart and soul of the guitar in me, I guess, because I grew up with the sound of it with my dad playing guitar. So. Looking at this exhibit in, in the museum itself and then looking at the books that you've created as well, too, anything that we didn't get to speak on in the first interview that just is awe-inspiring, not only as a photographer, but as a lover of music? You know, I think everyone always wants to know, like, what's the most famous guitar you photographed, you know? So, you know, you've got Jimmy Page, of course, and Billy Gibbons and Jeff Beck and all the heavy hitters, you know, everyone asks about those guys. There's so many other really talented guitar players that have made a name for themselves that don't get asked about as much. Like I heard they ever get asked about, you know, Roger Steen, for example, from the tubes. And he's a phenomenal guitar player. I, I saw the kinks in the tubes in the same weekend when I was growing up in Penticton, BC, and they came to Penticton. We were all on the beach and hanging out. And we, me and my girlfriends met these guys that were in town from God knows where, Vancouver or Calgary, or something. <laughs> we we're hanging out on the beach and they said, Hey, do you girls want to go see the kinks in the tubes this weekend? And we're like, yeah. So, that's how I got turned on to them. And the years later, you know, when, when was it? 2008, Roger Steen came into um, Gore Hills and played and I got to photograph his guitar, one of which was run over by a food truck at the airport as he saw the guitar case coming off the conveyor belt. As it was coming off, it fell off the conveyor belt and the food truck ran over it. Three years later and several thousand dollars later, he had the guitar repaired and it's still in his arsenal. It was his number 
number one. Now it's his number two, but it still looks mighty fine. And then he also has this really cool Swiegel guitar, which I've never heard of before that he plays with. There weren't that many of those guitars made. One was handcrafted for him by uh, the Swedish luthier. So that, if you may not recognize the name, it's because it's Swedish, it's Swiegel guitar. And it has unique uh, positions of the knob locations, the guitar shape and in and of itself. So you can look at this book, Immortal Axis, as, as a way to discover some new guitars that you may not have ever seen before. And also you get to see historical guitars like or, or basses, like John Entwistle's basses in here. I do a piece um, on The Who, where we've got John Entwistle's 1960s Gibson Thunderbird. So people hear guitar and they forget to ask me about the basses. <laughs> Quite a few really cool basses in this guitar. The John Entwistle one, is, it's the 1960s and it's a vintage and it's just gorgeous to see his wear and tear on there. And then it's accompanied by Pete Townsend's number nine, Les Paul, which is a historical guitar because he had that tour where he numbered all the guitars for ease of which one he wanted. Not all of them are in existence because he smashed a few of them, but I got the number nine. <laughs> so it's nice to have someone ask me about some of the lesser knowns, but certainly not insignificant, you know? They're all significant. That's why they're in this book. Yeah, and you mentioned a lot of the, the female guitarists, both bass and lead guitarists as well, too, uh, in your book, which was amazing to see, because I think that's a lot, a very forgotten part of rock and roll. I mean, the museum touches on the existence of female guitarists. You're also going in depth with their, some of their stories as well and the history that those guitars bring. 100%. Like Susie Quattro wrote the afterword for this book, and I was so thrilled to have a woman's voice, the first lady in rock and roll's voice was very important. I mean, Susie was the first woman to break out and get a recording contract as a female artist. She paved the way for Joan Jett. Joan Jett loved her. She looked up to, to Susie. And then Joan became famous even more so in her own right worldwide. So, and I'm so thrilled to have Joan Jett's guitar in this book. But Susie Quattro's P bass is a very significant bass because she was in a musical family. All her family members played guitars and sang they had a band together as the family. She was the youngest and the smallest and she didn't have an instrument yet. So she's like, well, what, what instrument am I gonna play? And the only one that was left that no one had picked was the bass. And so her dad gave her his P bass and it's still her number one. Well, she doesn't travel with it anymore, but I had to go all the way to England to photograph it because it's in her house. But it's a very special piece and it's, it's in the book and a beautiful portrait of her as well with the base is in the book. And that's what differentiates this book from my first book is that I have several artist portraits in this book as well, uh, where they're holding the guitar. Michael Franti, he's another one, you know, Spearhead. I, I love Michael Franti and his work material and his message to the world. He's like a Tom Murillo, you know, he's always got a message that he's delivering. Tommy Emmanuel is in this book. These are not as much of household names, but they are very significant, talented, skilled guitar players that deserve more recognition. I just love having them in here. I mean, Dave Alvin's in this book from the Blasters. I mean, if you ever go to a Blasters show, you get, you're, it's, you're blown away. I mean, they're just absolutely fantastic players. And Dave Alvin's Telecaster is in the book and it's, it's a vintage. I can't remember what year it is right now, but it's old and worn out. And I photographed it on a very old worn out bench that he had right outside of his house. So you get to go into their world and see their guitars in their world and see them up close and personal as you never would be able to just seeing them in a show and you get to see the headstock the front the back significant pieces of the guitar that you wouldn't have been able to see ordinarily so you get to view it up close and personal in the book yeah you know meeting these iconic legends that they are no matter where you've met them and taking pictures of their, their guitars themselves i'm sure the stories and the tidbits of just looking at the wear and tear of their guitar speaks more volumes than just a simple retelling of a story that totally got. does i mean it actually personifies the artist without them being in the picture them being in the picture is distracting you're going to look at them instead of at the guitar so the guitar is the star in, in this book and you get to see Rory Gallagher's 1961 Fender Stratocaster that was stolen 
from him back in those days, especially, let's see, it was in the 60s, nobody could afford a Telecaster Fender like that in, in Scotland and Ireland and anywhere, you know? And so he was one of the only guys who had one and somebody stole it all over the news. And so eventually the thief ditched the guitar in a ditch because he knew he would never be able to sell it. It was too famous of, of a guitar. And so he got it back. Somebody found it in a ditch and he got it back. So now you can see this guitar in all its glory with the patina all worn off. You can barely even see the original paint. It's all down to the bare wood. It's just gorgeous. I mean, you love to look at these worn guitars that show how they played the guitar, strike marks of you know positions that they, they use. And so it kind of tells a little bit about how they play the guitar. A little their heart and soul is always left behind on the guitar. And that's what fascinates me. Have you started a podcast or were you on a podcast recently? I've been doing a lot of podcasts lately. Yeah, uh, um, I did this Canadian book tour back in September, October. So I've been doing a lot of different interviews and podcasts. So yeah, you may have caught me somewhere somewhere. Did, did you do a seminar as well? A seminar, but I'm going to be doing a seminar actually okay. up in Canada in end of February in Toronto. I've been invited to be a speaker at Guitar Symposium hosted by David Barrett. You can check him out on his Facebook page, David Barrett. He's a fantastic musician. I mean, wow, he's really skilled and he's got a beautiful arsenal of guitars. And during COVID lockdown, every Friday, I think it was, he came on with, and he did a really cool show with different instruments and different genres. And like he'd do a Led Zeppelin thing and then he'd do a blues thing. And it was always different. Anyway, every year he does two guitar symposiums. He does one in Mexico and he does one in Toronto. And he gets, you know, 50 15, 20 guys that all have their their gear that they want to show each other. It's like a show and tell kind of thing. And then they jam and he does, David also plays the sitar. So he play, performs music and then they'll form little bands. And, and so it's fun. It's fun for everybody. And they all learn from each other. He's been doing this for a number of years. And I've, I came to know him at the NAMM show. And he graciously asked me to come and be a speaker at his event in Toronto. So I'm gonna be doing a really cool slideshow of different guitars in the book and their stories. The participants will also, if they would like to have me photograph their guitar, I'm gonna photograph their guitar for them so they can have a portrait of their beautiful axe. Something uh, unique and different. But tell us how, how you and, and Mark Ferrari got together in terms right, of this well, book. It's, it's so fun because we had this, this interview scheduled for today and I, for my birthday, which was October 20th, my friend um, Tambi Safran and Mark Ferrari, her boyfriend, who is still the lead guitar player for the 80s band Keel, You've Got the Right to Rock, <laughs> that track. Yeah. For my birthday, they gave me tickets, me and my husband, uh, tickets to go see Aerosmith tonight in Las <laughs> Vegas. So they came into town yesterday and we had a wonderful dinner last night at Lakeside at the Wynn Hotel. It's, it's such a great place. They, and so I thought, hey, since Mark's in the house, we should get him on camera and ask him some questions. <laughs> well, I do hate to say it, everyone, but that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. I want to thank you all for coming on the show. Okay, except we're three geeks talking. Yes, yeah, well, technically four, so, but yeah, I can't change the name. Three, three geeks talking. If anyone wants to get my book for um, a holiday gift, you can order it on Amazon. Yes. If somebody orders the book and they want to gift it for Christmas or if it's just for themselves, they can send me a direct message on Instagram and I will send them a signed book plate. So it's got the art of the book cover on it and then I will sign it to Joe love Lisa S. Johnson on there to send me a direct message on Instagram at at LSJ rock photos and just say hey I got your book can you send me a signed custom signature book plate and I will send it to you and then there's it's a sticker so on the back you just peel off the back and you stick it in the book so you have a signed book so I'm at 
at LSJ Rock Photos on Instagram. Well, like I said, that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. You can, of course, find this interview and a thousand plus others quite literally on our website, tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. That's the word two, not the number two. On our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash C forward slash tgtmedia. And we have our link tree, which has a lot more social media links, which is linktree.com forward slash two geeks talking. And as I say every week, everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out. Thanks for listening and watching on Two Geeks Talking.